If you are a small business owner, if you are trying to figure out how to use social media in a 2018, 2019, 2020 world, figure out the difference between branding and sales, this video is going to really, really help you explode your business. Thanks. Uh, guys, I'm really, really excited to be here. I have spoken at a few of these uh, dry cleaning conferences. First of all, I wanted to thank Kermit, thank Courtney, thank Methods for, for inviting me, uh, and thank all of you for being here. But before we start, I do wanna say that I, I get to speak at conferences all over the, the world, and it is so much work to put on an event. So I just wanted to like publicly thank you guys for doing this, and if we can give them a round of applause for uh, People don't understand how much work an event is. And so the fact that everybody is here and everybody looks happy uh, means that they probably did something right. I, uh, I live in New York City. I am very, very excited to be here in Boulder. It's my first time in Boulder. And uh, I, I'm just thrilled. It's not a bad place to be, right? You guys having fun? So, so a couple things I wanna talk about before we jump into the actual presentation. The first is I just want you guys to all know that I have immense respect for every single one of you sitting in this room. I get to speak to a lot of different audiences from Fortune 50 company executives and, and sales teams to university students. And what seems to always be most impressive to me is that everybody has an idea, right? Everybody wants to start a business. Everybody wants to be an entrepreneur. Everybody wants to be the boss of their thing. But to actually do that is really hard. Right? And every one of you knows how hard that is. And so I get to stand up in front of you today and share things with you that I'm actually see that, that are actually working. So I'm hoping that I motivate you in a certain way, right? People, people always say, are you a motivational speaker? And I always say, I think I have motivational tendencies, but what I'm most proud of is that I, I have an actual business for the last six years that does really well. We do branding communication and marketing strategies for some of the biggest brands in the world, as well as small businesses around the world. And what, I, what I'm most proud about as a speaker, you know, there's a lot of speakers out there, right? I'm sure you guys, if you've been to conferences, you've heard a lot of speakers. And they're all kind of talking to you, but you're always wondering, like, I wonder if this person is actually doing any of the things that he's telling me to do. So the thing that I take the most pride in, and Mao is on my team, and he, he follows me everywhere and he sees this stuff first person is that everything that I'm telling you is not some rhetoric BS thing that I read on Forbes.com. It's something that has either worked for my business or has worked for other people's businesses. My goal today is really simple. My goal today is to help you guys make more money. Oh, okay. <laughs> Someone's like, okay, okay, good. Now, now it's like, okay, now, the, like, the, now everyone's moving to the front. How many people here want to make more money? I, we all want to make more money, right? So that's the first thing I want to say. First thing I want to say is like, I have immense respect for you, whether you have a one or two person shop or you have hundreds of employees or thousands of employees. How many people in here have between one and 10 employees, including yourselves? How many people are t between 10 and 50? 50 to 100, more than 100. How many do you guys have? 150. 150? 120. And does anyone have more than 150? Cool. So that's a lot of employees. So whether you have one or 150, um, I'm excited about being here because I th everything that I'm about to say to you today, everything will work for you if you do it. <coughs> right now, here's the problem. 99% of you will hear me and either think, oh, he's young. He's young and he knows how to do this stuff and I don't know how to do it. Or you'll be really excited about it. And then next week will come along and you'll be like, oh, but I gotta hire somebody else, so I'd rather put the 75,000 there, right? So I understand the dynamics of the small business industry. I understand the dynamics of the dry, I'm getting to know a lot of the dry cleaners through the last six, seven, eight months. So I understand that there are a lot of demands. What I beg of you today is that you approach the subject with an open mind. A lot of the stuff I'm gonna tell you today is, this, is gonna be stuff that you've never heard before. And I know that that's scary. As someone that runs his own business, I know that, that can be scary. Some of the stuff I'm going to tell you might sound obvious, 
but you haven't done it yet. And then some of the stuff I'm going to tell you might be like, you're going to be like, there's just no way I'm going to do that. But no matter where we're at in the process, I just beg of you to keep a really open mind and to try to implement as much of this stuff as you can. I always say implementing one of the 10 tips that I give is better than implementing zero of them, right? So um, before we start, I just want to go, just kind of like scream it out at me. Just raise your hand, actually. What are you hoping to learn today? There's, there's actually a couple different parts of the question. You can answer whatever one you want. What are you hoping to learn today? What is your biggest frustration that you're currently dealing with? And if you could overcome that frustration, how would it benefit your business? So I'm hoping to learn this. I'm really frustrated about this. If I could figure this out, it would help me hire quickly or sell more or open another plant or whatever the case may be. So just raise your hand real quickly. The more interactive we can be during this, the better, trust me. And if you have questions throughout, please ask. Yes, sir. I don't always understand what we're doing. In what ways? In the way that uh, social media reacts as far as when do they receive our online ad? When, yep. And how do they receive them? And then how do, they, how do I get a count of, you know, is it working? Yep. Um, so, so, so I'm just going to write some stuff. So it's really kind of like how to track the ROI of Facebook yeah. or of social. Right? That doesn't work. Well, there's just so many different platforms. You say Facebook, and I finally think yep. I figured that one out somewhat. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, yep. you're talking about Instagram. Totally. Yep. So now I'm like, well, I don't know which one to use. Yep. And Twitter. Yeah. What do you think about that? Yeah. Well, I'm like, well, I don't know which one to use. Well, I'm like, well, I don't know which one to use. Well, I'm like, well, I don't know which one to use. Well, I'm like, well, I don't know which one to use. Well, I'm like, well, I don't know which one to use. Well, I'm like, well, I don't know which one to use. Well, I'm like, well, I don't know which one to use. Well, I'm like, well, I don't know which one to use. Well, I'm like, well, I don't know which one to use. Well, I'm like, well, I don't know which one to use. Well, I'm like, well, I don't know which one to use. Well, I'm like, well, I don't know which one to use. Well, I'm like, well, I don't know which one to use. <laughs> What's your Twitter handle? Uh, at oh boy. <laughs> we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. <laughs> JBM at. I don't think there's an at, but, uh, but we're, we'll get there. Everyone goes follow JBM right now. ROI of social. That's a great concern. It's a great frustration. It happens to everyone. Don't feel bad. Everyone is in this boat. And if you're not in this boat, you're lying. Who else? Yeah. So I want to know, I want to find the right balance of mm -hmm. how much effort to put in and time, mm -hmm. time is money yep. for the return. For social media. Yes. Balance of time and energy right. and ROI. Right? Good. What else? Yes, sir. I've got a creative company that's just making a presentation to us about a number of different avenues we can go. Yep. And I want to pick the right one. For Good. Me. So you want to know like what are the best creative choices for your for your dollar spent? Because I'm not doing them all. Yeah. What do they want to do with you? Uh, they, what kinds the of stuff? Presentation is next week. Oh, they haven't done it yet. Okay. But they're heavy on Facebook. Cool. All right. Good. What else? Yes, I brothers. Want to out how to What's that, Katie? I want to figure oh, it out was how to, you were 19 uh, when you did it. Yeah. <laughs> and your brother was also 19. Because yeah. you guys don't really look that much alike. <laughs> all right. Sorry. No, I want to figure out how to sell uh, a, the, the, the idea of our business to future employees. So yeah. Because when people come in, they look at our yep. press and they're like, geez, I don't want to do that. But so you want to sell your business well, like to, to employees that you're hiring? Future employees. So you want, to, you, want to, you want to show them this is a cool place to work? Right. Yeah. Cool. So, this, so it's, it's sort of a brand image play, right? And the company story. Yes, sir. Uh, Cool. Publicly. So proactive social, right? Not just reactive. Great. These are great. Yes, sir. I want to talk to the right customers. Yeah. 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 Targeted customers. Good. Great. What else? What's that? Not everybody uses our product. Right. What is your product? But what? Tell, tell me more about. Is, is it just there's? Is it a niche? You have a niche, or do you? Is it just dry cleaning in general for your area? Um, we dry clean. We have some specialty markets. We are <coughs> the dry cleaner for the city of Indianapolis and hotel industry. Ah, see, that's great. So, so that's really so. But we also do home delivery and uh -huh. stores, and we do all the, the rest of those. Stores. Uh huh. Good. So we'll probably I'll probably use you as an example. First of all, because I went to Butler. Second of all, because uh, these are these are good niche markets that are different customers, right? So what else? Who else? I saw some other hands. 
Yeah, for, for social? Yeah, that's good. Monthly budgets. Um, what else? These are great, guys. Who else? Yes, ma'am. There's so much going on in social media. Yeah. How do we get our message to yeah. stand out? Yeah. <coughs> Anybody else? These are great. Cool. So here's the fun thing. Kermit has given me three hours with you guys, which is amazing. Amazing. So the, the, the cool thing about that is that this can be very, very, very interactive. So like what you just told me about the, the hotel, I already have like 10 ideas for you, right? And so please, please, please share as much as you can with me because that will really help me trigger things that will be specific to you. The cool thing about an intimate group like this, 50 people or whatever, 30 people, and three hours is that this can actually turn into like a hyper focused consulting session for you guys, right? And, and these questions are really good questions. How much should I spend? How, who should I hire? How can I tell company story? How do I even know if the right person is seeing it, right? That's kind of like what everybody, so I wanna jump in really quickly. I wanna tell you about who I am, why I'm here today, what I'm doing, what I do for a living and, and, and why I'm qualified to talk to you guys about these kinds of things. I, um, I went to Butler University, Indianapolis, love Indianapolis. And um, I, when I graduated, I, I moved to San Francisco, taught for AmeriCorps for a year. Then I moved to New York City. I, I graduated from the City University of New York School of Law. During my law school, I started two different social entrepreneurship projects in Latin America. Um, and when I graduated from law school, I worked for the mayor, Mike Bloomberg. So Bloomberg was running for reelection for his third term. He hired me to run his recruitment efforts in Northern Manhattan. Talk about trying to get people to buy into the story. We, my job was to recruit volunteers and to train them. And so over the course of four months, we actually recruited 600 volunteers. Bloomberg won the third term, called me into his office. He said, you killed it. What do you want? I want to keep you in the administration. I said, I want to stay in the administration as a speechwriter. So I was a speechwriter for Bloomberg's administration for the next two and a half years. And what I quickly realized was that no matter what you wanted to do, whether you wanted to change an immigration law, whether you wanted to get reelected as mayor, whether you wanted to raise money for a nonprofit, you had to be able to tell a good story, right? And then you had to make sure that that story got in front of the right people. And then you had to make sure that you were trustworthy of those people. And then you had to make sure that those people actually took the action that you wanted them to take, whether it's voting or giving you money or whatever the case may be, right? And I realized, I was speechwriting for one of the most powerful men in the world, and I was good at it. So I, but then I started to think about, well, Brian, you have a lot to say. And it felt, you know, my original reason for working for him was I wanted to become the mayor of New York City. That was my reason for going to law school. It was my reason for working for Bloomberg. So I wanted to figure out how to do it. I love Bloomberg with all my heart. I definitely don't want to be the mayor of New York City. I saw too much up close and personal, and he was a billionaire. He didn't have to cater to anyone. I'm not a billionaire, so you have to like make a lot of really shitty sacrifices. And I just was like, I don't want to do that. But I did love the idea of helping people get what they wanted out of life. And that's ultimately why I wanted to be a politician. So I said, well, what if I did that as a businessman? And six years ago, I started a company where we focused initially on helping executives and leaders of companies figure out what is their story, how to tell their story. And then what happened, which always happens, as all of you probably know, is people would start to say, hey, can you start to create some content for me? Hey, can you help our, our marketing department? Hey, can you? And six years later, we now run campaigns for some of the biggest brands in the world, as well as some of the most cutting edge, th you know, we work with the United Nations, LinkedIn, Salesforce.com, Twitter, um, European Union. We work for biotech companies, publicly traded on NASDAQ, all kinds of different companies. And it all comes down to one thing. If someone says, Brian, what do you do? I tell you, I help you tell stories and create stories that sell, right? Because at the end of the day, all of this, no matter all this brand stuff is fun, and we're gonna get into it in a second, but unless you're making money, you don't have a business, right? And so that's, that's what I focused on in the last six years. I've been asked to write for Forbes magazine, I write for Entrepreneur magazine, I, write for, I wrote for the Huffington Post which is now Thrive Global. I've delivered a couple of TEDx talks. I speak internationally. I've probably spoken at probably 500 different conferences over the last six years. And it is really, 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 really fun what I do, right? The most fun that I have is probably in groups like this, which is like when Kermit and I saw each other last time, he was like, dude, this is, this is great. I love prep. <laughs> I just wanted to see if Kermit was listening. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, my audience is going to love this. 
and you have to make sure that you get them up on front of, in front of people on stage. He did say that. Courtney, back me up on this. You told me Kermit wants interactive exercises during this. Uh huh. And didn't he say, dude, I want interactive exercises? <laughs> I love practical practitioners. I love all of you. I have immense, I started this talk and I'll say it 18 more times throughout. I have immense respect for what you do. It is hard to run a business. And the fact that you are all here, I really, literally, my goal is to change completely, completely transform one of your businesses. It's the same goal I have every time I talk in front of a group of 30. A couple months ago, we were in front of 3,000 people. It, every single time I talk, I just want one of you. I want one. If I get all of you, great, but I want one. Because I know that there's always one. And every time I talk to dry cleaners, I get two or three people that have emailed me two, three, four, six months later, and they say, hey, dude, I did the thing that you said, and <laughs> it works. I can't believe it, but it works, right? This stuff works, guys. So these are all great things, and we're gonna, we're gonna touch on them, and if at any point you want me to revisit it, please, please do. But I wanted to give you a little bit of background about who I am, why I'm here, and you know, I live in New York City. We have a company there. I do a lot of work in Latin America. I just started a, a small seed fund in Latin America. We just did a competition where I brought two Latin American entrepreneurs to the Silicon Valley of California, introduced them to angel investors, venture capitalists. We toured Facebook. We met with, the, with directors of marketing at Facebook and Uber and Airbnb. And so what I'm trying to say to you is this, I'm living, eating and breathing in this world of digital marketing. And it is the best opportunity. So before we jump into the actual practical tips, I want you to all understand one thing. Right now, right now in 2018, October 2018, is the single best time in the history of business to be in business. But you have to understand something. The landscape of business is rapidly changing. And the biggest change is that everybody, and I mean everybody, from 13 years old to 72 years old is living in their mobile device. They are literally all in their cell phones all the time. And of every 60 seconds people spend in their cell phones, 33 to 37 of those seconds, so well over 50%, is being spent in one of seven different platforms. Right? And we're going to get into those. They're Instagram, they're Facebook, they're YouTube, they're Snapchat, they're a podcast, right? They're LinkedIn, they're a blog. They're living in one of seven different places. And if you all are not creating content and putting up content about your business in as many of those seven places as you can, you literally don't exist. You just don't exist. And the old school way of like knocking on the doors and sending out print and sending out mailers, it still works, but it's just more expensive and it's slower, right? Facebook and Instagram are way, 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 way cheaper, which is a lot of people understand that. So like when you're having your Facebook meeting next week, if they come to you and say, we can run this print mailer for 20,000, right? and we can reach 1,000 people or 10,000 people, or we can run a $20,000 Facebook ad and reach 1,000 people as well, you can be like, you're totally screwing me over. <laughs> you're completely screwing me over because for $10,000, if I can reach 1,000 people with a print mailer, I can reach, for $20,000 on Facebook, you can literally reach millions of people, right? But a lot of people don't know that. P these marketing agencies are taking massive advantage of people because Nobody knows what they're doing, including most of the time the marketing company, <laughs> honestly, because they're like a 22 year old kid that's like just out of college, has no idea how to sell things on the internet. I'm really interested in how do we use these social platforms? How do we spend as little as we can? And that doesn't mean we don't spend money, right? But how can we use our money intelligently? We work hard for our money. How do we use every single penny to get what we want out of that thing and how do we trace it and track it and see if it's worth it, cool? But we have to understand that everything is happening on the cellular phone, everything. Everything, everything, everything. And if you're not there, you don't exist. And that's scary when your business doesn't exist, okay? So, any quick questions before we jump into the actual framework of the talk? Quick questions, quick questions, quick questions, quick questions. Are there any yes. Notes? There are no handouts, so it's but you, got, you can take notes. 
Ready. <laughs> they gave you these really nice hotel Colorado pads. That's my Bible. Look at that. All right. Other questions? Yes, sir. Yeah, Brian, we yep. are using uh, Google Ads. Uh, yep. Google ads are very expensive, and 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 they're and they're and they're they're gonna get more expensive. Here's so r remind me of that question when we get into the Facebook part of this talk, because I'm gonna walk you through how to track ROI on Facebook. Cool. If I, c come back to me on that. Yes, ma'am. So out of the seven, do you believe we should be in all of them? Yeah, if you can, if you can, and I'm gonna. It's a good question. You're actually reading my mind. I'm gonna jump into that. Cool. We'll come if, and again, if I don't answer something, please don't be scared to re-ask. Other questions before I jump in? Cool. All right, so we're really gonna focus on three things in this, in this talk. Number one is the idea of what the heck is branding? The most overused word in America right now. Brand, brand, branding, brand, brand, branding, brand, right? Number two, what is the difference between pull and push marketing? Marketing. Sorry about my handwriting, guys. And number three, sales. Right? And all of these, we're going to focus on what do these look like, mean, how do, they, how do you play with them in a 2018, 2020, 2022 business world. Right? We're not interested. I'm not, I don't care what worked in 2012. I don't actually even care what worked in 2017 for you. Right? I care about what's going to work this year and what's gonna work for the next five years. You know, and, and, and honestly, outside of that, I don't, even, I don't know. Everyone's like, what's next, Brian? I'm like, I don't know. What's next is, for me, all I focus on is what's next in the next 12 to 36 months. I don't know what's coming in 10 years. All I know is like, you gotta feed your families for the next 12 to 36 months, and here's what's gonna work in the next 12 to 36 months, right? I don't know, Can, are you gonna be able to like, you know, artificially intelligently dry clean your clothes probably in like 2030 you know but i don't care about 2030 right now do you probably not right you probably care about 2019 and 2020. <laughs> so we're going to focus on what do these three what, what happens in these three worlds in the next 12 to 36 months cool all right let's start with branding when i say the word branding what do you guys think just like Throw out some words, just throw them out. Image, Image. good, what else? A logo, recognition. Logo, recognition, consistency. Culture. Good, what else? Association. Association, good, what else? Experience. Experience, good, what else? Feeling. Feeling, content, right? So when I think of the word brand, and this is what I tell all my clients, the only word that really, really resonates with me. And all these are good words, but ultimately what your brand is at the end of the day is what does somebody say about you when you're not around? It's just your reputation, right? Brand equals reputation, right? So why don't you write down right now in one sentence, what is your brand? What do people say about you at dinner when you're not around in Indianapolis? What do they say when they're sitting around the Cheesecake Factory? And then, what's, your, what's the name of your company? Fabric Care Cleaners. Well, they say, fat, well, you know, what, what do you guys know about Fabric Care Cleaners? What, what would the, in your ideal world, what is the one sentence that people say about you? Take a minute and write it down. And then underneath that, write down what do you think they actually say about you? And be honest. Here's what I'd love them to say about me. Here's what I actually think they say about me. Take a minute and do that. All right, so who wants to share real quick? And then we'll, we'll jump into it. Shares. Thank yeah, you so much. For sure. Yeah. I think what my customers say <laughs> about <coughs> my cleaners is they got great customer service. Good, customer service. Excellent, what else? And what do you think, that, what, do you, what, do you, what do you want them to say? What I want them to say and what they sometimes say is you can't use anybody else. Good, per that's great. That's great branding, yep. I think they say they're on my way to work. What I'd like them to say is they're the best cleaners. Cool. 
Although it's interesting, like the first part isn't a bad thing either, right? Like that's a good piece to keep in mind when you're thinking through content creation. And so that's helpful. Yes? I, the ideal thing, and I've heard him say it, I've heard, I've heard it actually say it yep. times, but I love these guys, they go the extra mile for us. Great. And then I, could, I had trouble with the actual, and I read his, and it's like, yeah, we're good cleaners and people trust us. Good. So, so, I mean, good. And it's helpful they're to, used, to... They're used to us. They, they know us. Yeah. Know us. Yeah. Good. Good. Awesome. Who else? Yeah. Sir. We have really good products at a fair price. Great customer service. Great. And what would you love them to say? They say that now. And what would, what would you, what's your ideal thing? Same thing? Same thing. Good. All right. Cool. Yeah. Let's do one more. One more. Yes, ma'am. I just pulled a review off of our website. Okay. That came in recently. Cool. And he said good quality, reliable, consistent service. I want him to say great quality, yep. reliable, outstanding service. Great. Awesome. So super helpful. Um, so just this is just really quickly. Did you write him back? Yes. Did you ask him how can we make that great, great, great? No, I didn't. Try that it. would have been a great response. But try it. You can write it back again. Uh -huh. It's your business. Right. Right? You can do whatever you want. So that's this is a really fun point because so many times, and like I love the shares that you said, like they said that because I heard them. Again, this is why I love you guys. I don't know if I mentioned I love you, but I love you. Because you are actually in the trenches with the customer. You're not like some fancy CEO in like some big corporate office that never talks to any of the clients. So you can jump in there and you can be like, how can we make everything great? And you can be like, oh, I know what they, exactly what they say because I'm there listening to them. So now the next thing is what do you do with that? So yeah. Whenever somebody compliments me in yeah. person, I ask them to go put it somewhere. Perfect. Great. Wherever they, do, wherever they do stuff already. Perfect. So let's, let's keep you two in mind for a second when we come into the thing. Now, those are great examples. I want you to think about that as we move into this next exercise. So let's talk about branding. If it's reputation, if it's what they say and what you want them to say, well, then we need to start to build that story out more, right? I am 100% convinced that the future of personal branding happens when every single one of you sitting in this conference room recognizes one important thing. And I'm going to say what I'm about to say probably four or five or six or seven different times throughout the day. This, if you understand what I'm about to say and if you implement it, will completely 100% change your business. And it goes back to the, the, the young lady back in the back. It goes back to your question, which is, the future of branding is the moment that you recognize that you are the CEO and the founder of a dry cleaning establishment, comma, slash, a media company. Stay with me here for a second. This is gonna be one of those parts that you're like, wait, what? You all, you all, every single one of you, whether you live in Indianapolis or whether you live in Southern California or whether you live in Las Vegas or whether you live no matter where you live, Every single one of you has an immense opportunity. And this is where my, like, I played college football at Butler actually, and this is where like my competitive side comes in. One of you can actually completely, and maybe it's methods, like one of you can actually completely dominate the industry. Completely dominate the industry. If you think of yourself as a media company, and then, a small business owner, and then a CEO, and then a dry cleaning establishment. What does that mean? That means right now, everybody's thinking about creating a brand that is a reliable, great customer service, brick and mortar shop. And that's fine, and that's probably what's kept you in business, and I'm not trying to hate on what kept you in business at all. I respect it. But I don't want you to stay in business, I want you to explode. Right? And the way that you explode is you recognize that it's no longer enough to just be a shop on a street. Because everybody's living now in the phone and now you have a chance to actually become the place where every single person in your neighborhood, in your small block, in your city, in your state, wakes up in the morning, check this out, and thinks to themselves, I wonder what Fabric Hair is talking about today because it's not gonna be the two for one shirt deal that we have, right? That's old school branding. 
That's old school marketing, that's old school business. The new business is, and let me play this out for you. What is a story that you want to tell about your company, about your employees, about your community, about your neighborhood, about your family, about the leaders, about whatever the case may be. What is the story that you want to tell? So let's, did you have a question? I was gonna say it's your success of your participation. In your exactly, and we're gonna get there. We're gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, this, is gonna, this, this part is always the best, like, this is the part that always like, clicks for, the, for, for you guys, always because no one's doing it and there is immense opportunity and it actually doesn't cost anything, okay? Cost your time or your intern's time or someone's time, but it doesn't cost anything. Here's how this looks. If I just told you guys that everybody's living in seven different platforms, right? What I want you to do is I want you to start to think about how can I create my content in a way that is different than I've ever done it before, that is different than all my competition. All right, let's play with Fabricare for a second. What makes you two, are you two business partners? No, it's his business. It's your business, and what, what do you do? What is your role? Uh, business development, marketing. Okay, so you, 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 so you tell the stories, and it's you, you founded the business? My parents. Your parents, okay, so, so, so this, this is good. So here's the, the story is, it's a family run business. You're, are you second generation? Or is, is, yeah. So your parents started it, and then you? Okay, and now are you guys related? No, okay, that's fine. So I'm just trying to put the pieces together. So the story is Indianapolis, family business, right? And, and how many people here have family businesses? A lot of you, great. And this is, this is what I'm finding to be common. How many of you, how many, how many if I go onto Fabricare's, do you have a Facebook page? Yeah. If I go onto your Facebook page right now, how many stories do I see on your Facebook page about the family history behind the business? Yeah, so it's time to resurrect it. You're thinking about it. It's happening, perfect. So you're on the right page. So what I want you to think about is this. Let's just say, well give me, let's just do this. Let's just do it real, real, for real. What is that video gonna look like? Of, of you talking about the family business. Not sure yet, it's okay. So let's just make it up, right? Let's just say, what's your name? Let's say Tom wants to do a video. Are your parents still alive? Yeah. Perfect. So let's say Tom and mom and dad, you know, I would sit down and I would, what I would actually, what I would do if I was Tom is I would sit down and I would interview my father. So we do have a history story on our about page. Cool, but do something new, do something fresh. So tomorrow, when you go back to Indianapolis, you're gonna call your dad and be like, yo dad, guess what? I'm gonna interview you. He'll love that, right? Maybe, maybe he'll hate it doesn't matter. He's going to love it for the next 12 minutes. You're going to make him love it. You're going to bring him whatever he needs. You're going to bring him cheesecake. You're going to bring him whatever he needs. You're going to sit him down and you're going to ask him questions that you've never, ever asked him before. Why did you start the business? What was the biggest frustration? What does this mean to you? What do the customers mean to you? How did it feel that these people in, on 86th Street were the ones that put me through college? Like, t give a message to them, okay? He's going to do it. You're going to record it. Now in the past, maybe you did that, maybe you didn't, but even if you did it, you put that where? On YouTube, right? And Tom calls me and says, Brian, guess what? I did a video. It's on YouTube. I did great, right? And I would say, yes, but you are not thinking of yourself as a media company. You are thinking of yourself as a single producer of content. How does a media company look, right? Here's what he does. Tom interviews his dad. What's your dad's name? Peter. Tom interviews, interviews Peter. Now, we have that video, and we put that video up on YouTube, right? So now we are in, part, we are in place number one. But we want to be a media company. We want to be everywhere. We want to be in every single one of the seven platforms that the people are consuming content. To your question, to your, back to your question, right? How many of them we do? Here's how many of them do. All of them, and here's how you do it in a way that doesn't kill you time-wise. You take that same video that you put up on YouTube and you drop that raw video into Facebook. Here's what you don't do, and this is just a real tactical thing that'll help a lot of you because I'm actually living in this. 
you don't put the YouTube link on your Facebook page because Facebook and YouTube are in competition to become the best video platforms. Facebook will destroy that post. No one will see it. I was thinking to myself, why is no one watching my YouTube videos that I'm putting up on Facebook? And then I, my friend is the director of marketing at Facebook and I call her, I was like, what's up with this? And she's like, dude, you think we're gonna promote YouTube? And I was like, oh shit, good point. <laughs> you know? Right? So, so you gotta drop that raw file. So I uploaded a video on Facebook, same video that I put the YouTube link on that I got one like on, and my viewership on that YouTube video went up one view, literally. It went from 12 to 13. I put that same video up the next week after I talked to her, and that same video got about 1,200 views. Crazy, right? It's business. Facebook and YouTube are competitors. So don't put, hey, check out my latest video talking to my dad as a link in Facebook. They'll squash it, no one will see it. Put up the, the, the raw footage in Facebook. Now we're in two places. Cool, great. What do we do next? We take a clip, the best clip, of Pete and Tom talking. And maybe we title it, um, you know, you know father-son laundry, father-son dry cleaning, father-son business, whatever you wanna say. For all of you fathers out there, that's actually probably what I would do. For all of you fathers out there, for all of you fathers, I would find the best 30 to 60 second clip of that video and i put it up on Instagram. With the, and this is called a meme video, guys. And these things are killing right now on Instagram. Right? And you're, you're gonna see why when we, get to the, when we get to the paid ad stuff. But like this stuff is just destroying. For all the fathers out there, what we're gonna do with this, by the way, Tom, is we're going to target this ad to fathers that live within 13 miles of your dry cleaners that make more than $100,000. What? You're like, what? We'll get to that part. That's the best part. The ad platforms are unbelievably good. Okay? What else do we do with this, guys? Now we got, we took care of the videos, right? Did a great job. We did the YouTube video, we got the Facebook video, we got the Instagram video. Now, maybe Tom, or maybe Tom's copywriter, or maybe Tom's intern, or maybe Tom's son, or maybe Tom's anything, wants to take this 12 minute YouTube video that we talked about father son dynamic in a small business. And guess what he does with it? He writes an article. The five lessons I learned from my dad when he handed me the business. And we, put, we write that article and we put it up on LinkedIn. And we put that same article up on our blog, on our website. And by the way, you can also put that same article a day later as a Facebook and Instagram, it's called long form blog post. Meaning I'm literally gonna copy and paste what I wrote and I'm gonna copy it into Facebook. It works, it's one of the best performing pieces of content right now on Facebook. Long form blog posts. I'm talking 500, 1,000, 2,000 words long. And you just drop it in, you put a picture up there, it works. People read it. People read it. it and, and, they, and they really do, because I test it all the time. And I always think of the same thing. So I'll bury little, I'll, I'll put little weird things like three-fourths of the way down that I know the audience will like respond to if they actually get to it. And then I'll read in the comments, like what are people responding to? They're responding to that weird thing that I put. Does it still help you if somehow if they don't read it through other search engines? Well, it, 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 hel it helped if they don't read the whole thing, you mean? Well, and I don't mean this in a bad way. Yeah. I, I admit I'm, maybe I'm a little bit pessimistic, but you know, what we do is not the sexiest thing. I understand. And, you know, people just want to come and drop off their clothes, and I'm always skeptical. Like, are they really going to read a blog that I write about whatever I put out on my dry cleaning stuff? Okay, I, so I understand that point, and this is so. There's two, I have two answers to that. The first thing is this: number one, it's not the sexiest industry for sure, um, but there are so many industries that are not. Like, right. shoes are not sexy either, but Nike has somehow made it very sexy. Right? So you are in control of how you, like there are, I could take so many businesses that are not sexy and turn them into a sexy, I could, I could actually take all of your businesses and turn it into the thing that everyone in town is talking about. Did you hear about what your company is called? Did you hear about Martinizing? Did you guys see what Mart, like at, it would be the table talk discussion. I'm serious. And it is within your, it is within your power. 
So the first thing is the fact that, you know, the fact that you have in your head that it's not a sexy industry, I get it, but that's because none of you have taken the initiative to make it sexy. That's what I mean. One of you will dominate. One of you will dominate this industry. One of you will become the, you will start getting invited to speak at these conferences because no one is doing it like you do. And then all of a sudden you're making $100,000 a year speaking at conferences because you took a branding initiative to make it sexy. That's the first thing. Second thing is even if they don't read the whole thing, people buy from people that they what? They like. They, like, they trust. But more than that, they buy from people that they remember, right? I have friends that will call me, good friends, like my best friends in life will call me and be like, bro, what do you do? And I'm like, you're my best friend in life. You don't know what I do? He's like, bro, I'm, bu- I'm busy. I'm like a partner at a big firm in Manhattan. Like, I don't, I don't know what you do. It's, it's not that he doesn't like me. It's not that he doesn't trust me because he does. I'm his best friend. It's that he doesn't remember me. And that's my fault. And if people don't remember you, it's your fault. And even if you put a long form blog post up and three people see the title, but don't take the time to read it, you're already back on their mind. And you do it again tomorrow. And again, the next day, persistence was one of the things that somebody said for the word for brand. Who said persistence for brand? What brand means? Somebody said persistence. Anyway, consistency. Who said consistency? Am I hearing things? <laughs> Dude, like, are you really making me sweat this much? <laughs> you're messed up, man. <laughs> I'm like sweating up here. And you're like, oh, I did. The one you're talking to. I did. Really. <laughs> Nobody else is here. Thank you, Brian. It's because we're, it's because we have the name brother thing. I have an idea of doing a name brother convention where like everyone has the same first name. You never have to ask anyone what their name is. So like you walk into the party and you're like, what's up, Brian? You're like, hey, what's up, Brian? You know, how's everything, man? Good. Yeah, you? You good? Yeah, good. It's like, you never be like, what's your name? You know, and you're not going to remember anyway. So anyway, what are we, what are we talking about? Oh, the blog. The blog. So you got to get on people's radars over and over and over. And if consistency was the word that you said, um, that is true. You have to be consistent, right? So, uh, question. Well, he's, I like what he was saying as far as how to make a not so sexy industry sexy. Mm-hmm. And I do see some of my customers and probably some uh, the folks here, uh, maybe I think Margaret's down in San Diego. I used to travel in that area where you're. You're charging by brand. Yep. And I think what this industry has gotten into a little bit of and hasn't taken far enough is <coughs> people are into fashion and their clothes are an investment. And the, how you make it sexy is you're taking care of their fashion and their investment. Yep. But at the same time, to make it sexy, you can let them know what's in fashion. And that's exactly right. And that's exactly. That's exactly right. And then that's what I mean by media company. And we're going to get into like, what are some of these ideas that you could like, but that is like an exact example. So you could start to interview fashion icons in your, in your neighborhood. You could get fashion icons to post a picture with you at your dry cleaners. You could, that's exactly right. And that's what I want everyone to start thinking like, right? Because that is now we are now, we are now so far beyond like two for one, right? That's exactly right. So the last thing I would say about, about, um, about Tom's interview with his father is, and this is a big one, and of, of, you know, we'll get into the importance of it, but I would then rip the audio from this YouTube video and I'd upload it to a, as a podcast, right? And podcasts, does everyone know what a podcast is? Does anyone not know what a podcast is? And that's fine if you don't. Never been on it. <coughs> no problem. A podcast is just a, a, a radio show. It's a modern day radio show. You can create your own on iTunes. You can create your own on Stitcher. You can create your own on Podomatic. Create your own on, 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 on all these different platforms. And there, there are a couple different advantages to a podcast. And I want to just talk about podcasts for just a second. And then if there are more questions about it, we can get into them. But I do think it's worth just taking a two minute pause here to talk about. The reason that I'm so bullish on podcasts and my company is actually building out an audio division right now. We're, we're producing podcasts for the city of New York for one of their biggest agencies, as well as uh, a couple of big time personal brands in, in the New York City area. Um, the reason that I think podcasting is so, so important is because it's passive consumption. 
you know, you can cook your family dinner and listen to a podcast, but you can't cook your family dinner and watch the YouTube video. You can take a shower and listen to a podcast, but you're probably not going to want to be holding a phone in the shower and watch a YouTube video, right? You can drive your kids to school. You can commute. You can fly on a plane. What we love as human beings more than basically anything other than family and faith and having food is what? Time. We value time more than basically anything. We Think about this, guys and gals. We value time so much that when we get an email that we really hate, and you, you all know the people that somehow got you on their mailing list, and you hate them. You're never going to buy from them, ever. And you open their email, and you're like, oh, another email from this jerk, right? Instead of scrolling down to the bottom of that email and hitting unsubscribe, and then filling out the two or three questions as to why you're unsubscribed, which takes eight seconds, you're just going to delete the email. You actually value seven seconds of your life so much that you're willing to put yourself through the stressful agony every week of being like, I hate you. But you don't want to take seven seconds to unsubscribe. Right? It's unbelievable. And so we value time. We value time. The reason that Uber and Lyft are, th are even a thing right now. I live in New York City. I call an Uber. I'm waiting for the Uber. And guess what I see? I see 13 yellow cabs pass by and they're all empty. But the perception in my mind of saving time knowing that Uber's coming in two minutes is worth it to me. Right? So the thing about a podcast is you are giving your consumers their time back. That's why I'm so bullish on every single one of you also having a podcast. Now, does this make sense as a concept? Does anyone have questions logistically or anything? Yes, sir. All right, so first, we did a video and put it on YouTube. Yeah. Then we took a clip and put it on Facebook. Yeah, well, no, you, you, you take that same video. We embedded it in Facebook. You just drop it in Facebook, exactly. We didn't have a link. Exactly. Then we took a clip and put it on Instagram. Exactly. Yep. Put it on LinkedIn, a blog. You got it. If you have a, if you have, if you have a blog on your website. It depends. It depends. It depends. This so, so so but here here it's a lot of work and I I always hear that and I get that. There's a couple things. Number one, you can hire it out and because this is very very, um, how do I say this nicely? It doesn't require a whole lot of intellectual intelligence. Should my ad agency be doing this? Yes, for sure. Here's, what's that? Okay. Here are the two places that your ad agency might not, where, you, where you'll have to be vigilant about watching them. Number one, when you start to get into the, art, to, to the article part, right? It shouldn't be that hard to transcribe an interview. Like, it shouldn't be that hard. But if you're kind of, if you take pride in being a great writer, and your ad agency is literally kind of like transcribing things and it doesn't feel as sexy to you, then maybe you want to just write the article or hire someone to write the article. That's number one. Um, number two is they have to spend a little bit of time figuring out like what kind of memes will work. So the most important thing to go back to your ad agency and tell them is like, I heard this guy in Colorado, he gave us these suggestions. I want to start implementing them. There are a couple things that are really important. Number one, we're dropping the Facebook video as a raw video, okay? Number two, the top of the meme video that we're making, and if you're, if you're working with an ad agency and they don't know what a meme video is, fire them tomorrow. Yes. Seriously, because a lot of people will be like, wait, what's a meme video? And that's M-E-M-E, M-E-M-E, -E -E, a meme video. If you're working with someone that does not know what a meme video is, they are not in 2018 marketing world. Yeah, I can, I can actually, actually show you what it is. I have it up here right here. <laughs> I, can sh I can show you. Oh, Kermit, what's the, oh, thanks, man. <laughs> the dude. He's never going to let me live that one down. All right. So check this out, guys. Does me mean something like M-E-M? What's it it means it's traveling. Can you track what is it like? Method? Can we play this? Can, like you, can you hear it? You can track gossip. That's a meme. 
Okay. So there's no like, fired up here going. Oh, no problem. You're wondering if that's yeah. <laughs> So real, so real quick, while Kermit's firing up the projector, let me, let me just finish what else is important. What's your name, sir? Jim. Jim. Jim, let me just finish what else is important. So the meme video is important. And then the, he, he, here's where most people are going to make a mistake, especially if you're working with a marketing agency that basically only cares about you as a you know, monthly $5,000 investment. Yeah. So. Well, of course you're not, because nobody's doing this. This is, the, this is like the cutting edge. This is like the best stuff, right? So we'll come to this in one second. So every single platform is different, right? Like the 62-year-old lady that's in Facebook is there for a different reason than the 18-year-old boy that's in Instagram, okay? So the copy has to change for all of these. And this is like, you don't have to figure this stuff out today. This, this is stuff that you'll tweak, you'll figure out. But if the ad agency that you work with takes the same video on Facebook and YouTube and puts it up on Facebook and YouTube and Instagram and all of the copy, meaning the description of what that says under that video is exactly the same, they're lazy and you should either fire them or tell them to start to step it up. Because if I, you know, on a YouTube, I'm gonna write a description and at the bottom of that description, it's going to say, follow me on Facebook, follow me on YouTube, follow me on Instagram, follow me here. I'm not going to do the same thing on Facebook. I'm going to write, I'm going to write a much quicker clip on Facebook. I'm going to write a different clip on Instagram, right? Does that make sense? Yeah. So these are the places that you have to really, if you're outsourcing this stuff, I'm going to come to you in a second. I'm just trying to get it done. That's why I was asking. With the, you know, it's it's great. And this is, they, they can definitely do this for you. The importance, things are that. The Facebook thing, the Instagram meme video, and that every copy is different. Okay, now here's what a meme video looks like. So your clients deserve the best. Let's play you this one. Right? So just so you know, here's how I hack my content. And I'm not saying that all of you have to do this, although it really, 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 I mean, I, I committed to this idea about 18 months ago. My business has doubled in the last 18, like doubled in the last 18 months. And the coolest part about it, and this is the part, part two we'll get to, I don't even, I don't even, I don't even like ask for business. It all comes to me. It's pull marketing. It all, it's all coming to me. So here's an example of a meme video. Okay. Oh wait, this is in Spanish. <laughs> Sorry. Thank <laughs> you. We have a bi I have a complete bi a completely bilingual brand. So, um, a lot of this stuff is in, is in Spanish, but, um, Make your clients happy. Oh, here we go. This one's in English. So the moment I quit my job, okay? I didn't run an ad on this. This got 1,100 views uh, organically. If I ran an ad on this, I would probably run it against 21 to 27 year olds who are following like motivational people or digital nomad people, people that want to move out of their job. Right? So the moment I quit my job, peop that, you know, people are like, oh, what's it going to say? They're, list they're laying in bed with their partner. They're at their desk where they're not supposed to be on Instagram. They're on the toilet. Like, they, don't want, they don't want people to know they're watching Instagram. 68% of people are not listening to the audio of your videos. So if you, if you don't have those subtitles down there, you're missing an opportunity to communicate to people even if they're not watching. Right? Even on the YouTube videos? No, on, on the Instagram videos. On YouTube, they're, they're listening to the audio. Do you know what yeah. that is on Facebook? I don't, I don't. I don't want to lie to you, I don't know. But it's, 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 it's probably a little bit lower, but not a lot. Facebook, my Facebook videos are usually a little bit longer, so people aren't going to really invest like eight minutes of reading. But for a 35 second clip, they will. They'll read, right? right. Question. Um, we had someone approach us and say that Flickr now is a better vehicle to put videos on than YouTube. I'm not familiar with I'm not familiar with how well Flickr is performing. Okay. I would say they're I don't I don't want to say they're wrong. I would just say do them both. Okay. Yeah. I'm I mean when when it when it's between doing less and doing more, just do more. Always. Yes. I have a question for me. I, I have no means in marketing or sales or anything like that. No worries. I just when I watch videos, yeah. like and they just look so unprofessional Yeah. Done, yeah. I just can't watch it. Yeah. But when, and when you're saying create videos, I mean for people watch those videos where I'm sitting there with my phone yeah. videotaping myself or whatever. I mean, 
This is a great, I'm really happy you asked this question. There's a couple of really important things happening in your question. And, and this is gonna help a lot of you, so thank you for asking. Number one, you would be surprised how much the quality of the video doesn't matter when you're delivering great content. Number one. Number two, and this is, I'm so glad you asked. Your opinion, your opinion, what's your name? Mike. Mike. Mike's singular opinion about his opinion on video has nothing to do with the market. And so, and, and so many people make this mistake. They say, I would never watch an eight minute video, so I'm not gonna make one. I'm like, you're unbelievably naive to the marketplace because just because you would never watch an eight minute video, there are billions of people watching eight minute videos. So your own opinion about what you think is good or bad means absolutely nothing to business. I'm not trying to be hard on you, but like that's a really, really, really important point. You know, because people are like, oh, but this video is 18 minutes. And I'm like, okay, when was the last time that you went to a movie? Oh, it went last weekend. Okay, did you stay for the whole thing? Yeah, how long was it? Two hours. So, so you sat and watched a video for 120 minutes. Yeah. So why is 18 minutes too many? Oh, I, I don't know, I guess it's not. Right? It's more about the, what is it that you're delivering content-wise, right? Questions? And, and my opinion is, if it's a professional video mm -hmm. being sold, if it's somebody sitting in the car like you had, yep. saying it, I think it seems more real. I mean, do you agree with I that? I completely agree with that. And I, th I actually think for what you guys do, the least produced it is, the better. Yeah. But what kind of content is going to Oh, good question. <laughs> That's what we're going to get to next. That is a great question. And I, I love how many hands are up right now. I'm like, I'm like really pumped up right now. Like I'm really like, I'm trying to play it cool, but I'm like fucking fired up right now. All right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can we just all agree that this will be the best? I love you, man, but like this will be the best. Can we like all agree that this will be the best conference that we've ever been to together? Like, can we just like, can we try to make sure that like this is like, this is the Kauai of beaches? Like no, you can never go to another beach after this. <laughs> yeah, I know. Hey, what's up? All right. Vimeo, is that a good? Um... Yeah, but you can't see how many views there are. Okay, so what should I use? YouTube, okay. and it's free. Sometimes if you get the pay-per-view. Vimeo versus YouTube. So then how do I take it raw and drop it into? YouTube? Yeah. You, you can just, like, there's literally just like an upload file button. Yeah. Yeah. Then and and, the, and these legit. how do I put it on Facebook? How do you have it? You have the same, you have the same, you, so you have the, so let's say you did it on your phone. Yeah. You can just upload it to Facebook from your phone. Or if you saved it into a hard disk, or like if you have anyone that has any video knowledge, okay, yeah. they'll know how to do it. Okay. Unless you want to do it yourself, then just watch like a video, a YouTube video, about how to upload a video from. Okay. And 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 you know what? Guys, I actually I actually really respect. Yeah, yeah. You can use the teenagers. Uh, you what you don't want to use the teenagers for is part three when we get to the Facebook advertising stuff, and I'll explain why in a second. Um, anything, like I admire the fact that you asked that question because everyone's like, oh, that's a basic question, but like I admire the fact you asked it because anything that you guys don't know, like logistically, like how do I make a meme video might be something you're thinking about. Just go into YouTube or Google and like there are so many videos about how you can create, how, to, how, do, would I, how do I upload a raw video onto Facebook? Okay. There'll be thousands of videos to show you. Yes? On your title for the earlier he said it was important um, what the top of the MIM file said but I, don't, I didn't hear why or why. oh because it's just it, it's the split second where someone just decides if they want to watch it or not so it's the title that, okay. and then we're going to talk about the next part of this is going to be intent based marketing and so we're going to talk about like, decon like de re deconstructing and reverse engineering who you want to watch and why you want them to watch it and that will also help with thinking through the title, thinking through the copy, thinking through all that. Cool? Yes? Our Facebook post automatically fits into Twitter. Do we need to do something different or? <sighs> I don't, I don't, I would, I'd have to see your Facebook post, but I would say probably you do. Probably, I like to keep things as separate as possible because again, people are on Twitter to listen. Like Twitter is the only social platform where people actually go to like listen. 
Everything else they're going to like create or consume. Twitter is a great place to like hear what the market is saying. So, you know, give me an example of like a recent Facebook post that you put that got tweeted. Uh, like we have like the monthly promotions, let's say 15% of linens and stuff, and it directly goes to link there when they click the link. Yeah, so you know, you might want to, you might, your Facebook thing might say, like, hey, check it out, 15% off for the month of October, come see us in Southern California. And then your Twitter thing, which is a little bit more snappy, might be like, you know, who wants to save some money today? Question mark, bit.ly, like link to the thing, right? But you didn't have you didn't Twitter, Twitter, in your Twitter is definitely something that you can do. I didn't mention it because it's not a content creation place. But you can definitely do Twitter. I mean, Twitter works, especially for small markets. And that's one of the seven as well. I didn't, I didn't mention it just because it didn't fit into like the thing, but like you can take any of the content that you have and then write a really quick little post and then put that link on Twitter, right? Good, question, yes? So how do you feel about Buffer for managing some of this? So like Buffer, like Hootsuite, like these, it's, it's if you write the copy, differently for every platform, it's fine. Yeah, it's totally fine, it's a time saver. So if, for those of you that aren't familiar, Hootsuite, Buffer, these are all uh, management tools that allow you to basically upload stuff in one place, schedule when it gets sent out, and then you just hit program. And then at, so, so today, tell me your name? Jamie. So Jamie is today gonna sit and do all of her week's content, right? She's gonna spend four hours today sitting down and writing everything out and then she's gonna put, this one gets scheduled for Monday at noon, this one gets scheduled for Tuesday at three, this one gets scheduled for Wednesday at 9 a.m., and then program, and then throughout the week, she doesn't have to think about it. She's not like at the computer at noon typing it in. So it's a, it's a, good, it's a good tool as well. Yes, sir? Can you point us to, or will you be sharing questions we can ask if we're gonna hire a media company like he's going to do? Sure. Like, you know, cause there's a million of them. <coughs> yeah. How do we know? We don't know as much as they do. Yeah. So I don't know what to ask them to know if they know what they're doing. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, the, yeah, you could hire you could hire our company. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Connect to BrianRashid.com. <laughs> Why don't everyone just take a second and think about that? <laughs> Connect at BrianRashid.com. Kermit, can you get that up there for me, bro? <laughs> Thanks, bro. See, you guys heard the bro, right? He said bro that time. I knew it, Courtney. Courtney, you heard it, right? <coughs> short, a, 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 a competitor of ours used the same company. Yeah. And I went on and I was looking at their thing and it really had like the holiday. Every holiday. It had like the same ad. They did. They ran the same. That's just, that's pathetic. That's just negligent. That's just, I mean, that I, I am so, uh, you don't even want to get me started. That is pathetic. I mean, I can't, I can't even imagine that people can sleep at night. I mean, that is just. Yeah, that's horrible. Sorry to hear that. No. May I defend that? Sure, it was your company? <laughs> <laughs> Are you the competitor? Are you the competitor? Because I'm about to get really excited. <laughs> to, to, to use your word, I call bullshit on that. Because there are, there are this is amazing. placed on what you spend for your media. Say, say that again, there what? The, the value for the media. Yeah. If everybody had unique content, the cost would be more. And you have the ability to have unique content from everybody else. It just costs more money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but I think... So I'm not the competitor. Damn it. I am very closely related to that competitor. I'm yeah. assuming he's talking about me creating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I, even even to your point, like I don't care, I don't care how little or how much you're paying. If you're literally recycling the same content for paying two paying clients, it's lazy and, and negligent, and it should not happen. And I agree, but there's yeah. a cost, at least in the in the environments where it's. I totally understood, and but all I'm saying is like use a different stock image. Sure. You know, that's crazy. Okay, question. This is very selfish, but I need. A I break. love I selfish questions. Anything, yeah. So can we all take a break? You need a break? I need a break. Are we at 930? Almost. All right. Do, do you want to take a break? That's fine. Let me take a break. <laughs> Thank you, dude. Thank you. Some of the biggest brands in the world are still paying for Facebook, uh, for TV commercials. Guess how much money last year was spent 
from CPG, from consumer packaged goods brands in TV commercials, $80 billion. $80 billion. So you guys are thinking, what does that have to do with me? Here's what it has to do with you. The second that Chase Bank and Coca-Cola and Pepsi and all the biggest brands in the world figure out that Facebook is the only way to sell things at this point, they're gonna start to put their money into the Facebook ad platform. So what that means is, what costs you $7 to get in front of 1,000 people today in 36 months when all these brands figure it out is gonna cost you $75. And so we have a window and it's small. It's one, two, maybe three years. Because big companies are slow and bureaucratic and clunky and resistant to change. The biggest difference that all of us have against big companies is we're the ones that make the decisions. And we can decide tomorrow to do this and invest tomorrow. And guess what? All, and I mean all of the financial upside that we benefit from is ours. The reason that these big brands are reluctant to do this is because they're waiting for their next raise. They don't actually care about Coca-Cola. It's not their company. They're the CEO of a company and they care about their profit shares and they care about their next job and they care about their next raise and they care about the next board that they're gonna sit on. They don't actually care about the revenues of the company. That's why they're slow. Because if it was their company, they'd do it tomorrow. Because they're spending way too much money and it's all getting wasted. We all care a lot because it's our money and it's our company, right? So does that make sense about why I'm pushing? That's kind of a longer answer to your question, but everyone needs to understand that if you don't figure this out in the next year or two or three, you're gonna call me in 10 years and be like, dude, I really wish I would've listened to you. That same ad is now 120. It's the, same, it's the reason I don't, I don't do SEO. Because wine eight years ago was 10 cents a click and now it's 15 bucks, right? So that's, that's how, that's, that's why I'm so passionate about telling you guys, this is the chance for Facebook and Instagram. What's SEO? S search, en search engine optimization. So you paying for like, every time someone says wine, you're thinking. Gotcha. So how important is your website now? So good question. So now, now there's just so much to cover. So now, <laughs> I know it's crazy. So I just totally told you guys about how amazing Facebook and Instagram and YouTube and all these platforms are, right? But what I'm nervous about is that if you become too dependent on those platforms, you're vulnerable, meaning if tomorrow you have 16,000 followers and you put up a picture, a video of you with a song that isn't copyrighted, or that's copyrighted that you didn't get permission for, and Instagram decides to kick you off their platform, you just worked really hard for the last one, two, three, four, five, six, seven years to get those 16,000 people and now they're phew, gone. The reason I like websites and the reason I like any of these platforms and what we should all be thinking about as we're creating this content and as we're starting to move people into funnels is how do I become independent of all of this? Meaning, how do I use Facebook and Instagram and YouTube and everything to get people to a central place like a website where I can get what? Their name, their email, and their phone number because this is what makes you un irreplaceable. When you build your own database, you wanna use, I, I, wanna, I don't care at all about Facebook. I don't care at all about Instagram. I use them. I use them so hard for my own professional benefit. I'm not on them to find chicks and hook up. I'm on them to literally find customers and make money. And the best way to do that is to get on there, to build the brand that we just spent the first two hours talking about so that people trust you. Because I'm not gonna give you my name and my email unless I trust you, unless you've added value, unless you've shown me that you can do something for me. And then when it comes time for me to make a very simple ask, which is, hey, we'll send you amazing deals, just give me your name and your email, then you start to build the name and the email, and if Facebook or Instagram or YouTube or LinkedIn disappears tomorrow, I don't care at all because I've already used it for what I need, which is to get more customers, right? And the other thing is don't, be, don't depend just on the social platforms to get the new customers. You guys, if I was running a dry cleaning establishment, 
I would be standing at the front of that establishment and every single person that walks in be like, hey, did you, have you seen our new YouTube show? We're bringing the best of Montgomery. We're bringing the best of Indy. We're bringing the best of New York. We're bringing, like, it's mind blowing what we're doing. Like, I, have you seen it? Have you, if you haven't seen it, please just put your name and your email here. I'm gonna send you the latest episode. And they're like, oh, cool, yeah. Did you see it? We just interviewed the mayor. Hey, we just interviewed the pastor. Hey, we just interviewed this. Have you been to the new restaurant up the street? No, I haven't. You got it. You, you got to see the interview. It's crazy. Name, email, send them. What you're doing? You're building brand. You're adding them value. You are getting their name and their email. They're going to come back in. Next time they come in, they're going to be like, dude, the, the, the interview with the mayor was awesome. What do you ask them? Who else should we interview? Who else do you know? What do you do? Well, you want to be on the show? Start interviewing your customers. You want to be on the show? I noticed that you, were, you said on the PTA at the school, like, tell me about your experience. What do the rest of the parents in this community need to know? Maybe the ones that are too busy to sit on the PTA, you could help them out. What can you do for them? And now all of a sudden what is happening, it's like, well, yeah, I want to be on the show. You think that he's ever going to go anywhere else after he's on my show? He's never going anywhere else. And he's going to tell everyone at his kid's eighth birthday party next week that he was on my show. And then his wife's going to show me the video. And they're going to show the video. And now all of a sudden you're in front of 32 new people. Do you guys understand how unbelievable this opportunity is? It's crazy. But you can still sign like two for one shirt deals if you want. <laughs> this is the future, guys. This is the future. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. And, and you said it's sponsored by Fabricator. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Are you creating a new entity? Like, are you creating a new Facebook page for the show? Or that this is <coughs> no, no, no. It all, lives in the it all lives in the existing Facebook page. And on your company's YouTube channel? Yep. Okay. Yep. So it's just whatever is sponsored by? Yep, exactly. Okay. Whatever you want to do. Right. Frequently asked questions sponsored by. Uh, it, you know, today in the neighborhood, sponsored by. She already remembers us because you just did it. See? Fabricare. She said the name. God, I'm so tired. Yeah, I'm kidding. So when you're talking about being independent of the um, social media, should we be driving customers to our website through the social totally. media? Totally. Totally. Or, or use social media to have people engage in comments and then hit them up on like <coughs> direct messages or in the comments and be like, hey, Thank you so much. Have you checked out the website? Or thank you so much. Can we get you on our mailing list? Or thank you so much. Have you seen our most recent book? Or can we send you deals? Can we like get them somehow into your, because just because they go from social to your website doesn't mean you get their name and their email. What you really want is their name and their email. Because if your website is way worse than your social media, which is totally possible. A lot of people invest a lot in their social and not invest in their website. And they're sending people to the website. It's like, uh, then people are like, wait, but this, the YouTube video is cool, but this website is crap. Like, I don't, I don't really trust, I thought I trust him, but now I don't. It's like, just get people into the store. You know, that's the best thing you can do. Because then at the store, you're in complete control. And you need to have somebody there in the front being like, hey, thank you so much for coming. Um, so we're doing this cool new thing. We're doing like a YouTube show about the local thing. Um, have you seen it? We'd love, do, do you have recommendations? Like, who should we interview next? Like, who is a, who is a hero in our local community? Guys, no one's doing this. No one is doing this. I mean, very few people are doing this in general, especially no one is doing it that I've seen in the dry cleaning industry. If you can build the local feel good news station of your town, it's over. Yeah. When some of the questions you're gonna ask is just like, uh, we'll get you excited about Kalamazoo Mayor or tell us some of the things you got coming down the line or yeah. is there anything new and exciting that we should, that you know, Kelms we should know about that. Totally, exactly. <coughs> so if, if if my if my but depends on who your audience is, right. right? If your audience is fast driving car people, be like you know what? Like a lot of our a lot of our audience is obsessed with lifestyle, is obsessed with fast cars. Is it, so tell us like if you were let's say a thirty to forty year old active person in this city, what kind of stuff should you do? Because then you're going to target the 30 to 40 year olds that are coming in to, to do business with you anyway. That's the reverse intent based marketing that, that we were talking about earlier. So you'd be go, like going to like the local car museum. Totally. Like the curator, go to the, yep. the, the wakeboard boat. Exactly. Shop or 
I'd do some wakeboarding. I'd, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Get good at wakeboarding. It's all right. Or, or be really bad at wakeboarding, but do a funny yeah. video. <laughs> yeah. That'd be funny. It's your next career. Question. Yeah, yeah, totally. So if you so let's say let's say you interview a mayor of uh, of 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 Baltimore, and then you need, then you want to interview the mayor of uh, McLean, Virginia. Then you want to interview the mayor of uh, Washington D.C. I don't think they have a mayor, but you know what I'm saying. That you can literally then take those interviews and then target people that live in McLean, that live in Arlington, that live in Washington. That's why it's not necessary to have six different pages, because you can create six different pieces of content. They all live on the same page, but you've targeted to different groups because they're not going to see it any different. Cool? Other questions? Yes, sir. What do you think of Yelp? Yelp? I think Yelp is really important for you guys, right? Like Yelp and Google reviews seem to be really important to you. So this is where it becomes smart to start to build a name and an email list. But the problem with Yelp is they force you to have each location. <coughs> oh, for you to, to get a review? They review the location, they don't review the company. Yeah. Um, well, what you could do then in that case is you could have, you could run a Facebook ad to the six different locations, and then you could, at the end of the, fa you, could, you could just be like, yo, guys, we're really, really grateful for you to be here. Uh, if you haven't seen our most recent family video, please check it out. It's up on our YouTube, don't say YouTube. It's up because they'll be able to pick that up too, actually. Facebook can pick that up too. Think about that. It's another thing I forgot to say check out our Facebook show. Don't say check out our YouTube show because even just saying YouTube, they'll, so check out our recent Facebook show. Also, if you haven't liked us on Yelp yet, please, please, please leave a review. Um, we, you know. And the other important thing is this, and so this is a good question. You can actually start your video, if you're about to, we'll get into it in part three, but if you're about to make a sale, you can actually start your video by saying like, hey, for my friends in Carmel, right? If you're in Carmel and you're about to get married, like that's how you should be starting your sales videos because we're about to get into sales next because this is all great, but if you don't make money, it means nothing. So the first three to five seconds of your video can be very targeted. If you, I, listen, I know you're about to get married. I know you live in Indy and people are like, what, how'd you know that? And you're like, I knew that because of Facebook, right? But that needs to be your first line. Hey, my Carmel friends, like if you haven't checked it out, as you know, we're here in Indy, we do a family-based business. If you haven't checked out our recent video, it's really cool. What we'd really love is if you could leave us a Yelp review. And there's no problem doing that either, right? So that's how I'd, I'd navigate that. All right, so now let's move into, I just really quickly, because I feel like we've covered a lot of part two, which is the, the, the difference between push and pull marketing. What's gonna happen is because of what everything that you guys have just done, right? People are now going to, when it's time to buy, are going to come to you. And that's the difference between push, you know, I call it the, like the, the, the teeter totter of value rule, which is look at your social media right now. If your sales are heavier than your brand, you're probably going to lose. Probably going to lose because people are tired of everyone getting sold on Facebook all the time. So this is, this is the way to bring the brand play higher than the sales. And ironically, what happens is it flips your sales increase tremendously when your brand goes up. Does that make sense? It's just the difference between push, push, push marketing, buy my stuff, buy my stuff, buy my stuff, and like lots and lots and lots of cool value, and you're like, where? Like, guys, honestly, this happens to me. We put out all kinds of free content, all kinds, to the point where people will direct message me and email me, and they'll be like, dude, what can we buy from you? And when you get to that point, when people are like, what can we buy from you? You've just won. You've won the whole thing, right? I didn't sell my social media services up here, but four of you came up to me during the thing, like how much do you cost? Because I'm bringing it, I'm bringing the value. I'm bringing the real life value and you can do it too. Cool? Sales, part three. How are we doing on time, Kermit? Half an hour, perfect. <laughs> it's usually like you have three minutes. <laughs> Thank you for letting me have all this time with these amazing people.
I usually get like one hour and I'm, if you think I talk fast now. Everybody good? Everybody having fun? Yeah? yeah? You guys learning? Yeah. Excited? Yeah. All right, cool. All right, so sales. How many people in here are extremely happy with their revenue? Raise your hand. I'm really, st don't be shy. I'm stoked. I'm happy. How many people here are like, my revenues suck? We got one honest person in here, two honest people in here. How many people are like, eh, it's okay. How many people in here are out of business in the next year? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. All right, so sales are important. Right now, let me ask you a question. For the people that are, for you, that's good with sales. Are you, you, you're good with sales? No, no, I like more sales. Who, who's, who's feeling great about their sales right now? Nobody. Awesome. You feeling pretty good about your sales? What, what's working for you? Well, hell yeah, economy, but our brand. Yeah, what's, your, what's good about your brand? Uh, well, we just went through a new branding process, but uh, it was still decent before. Um, what's good about our brand? I think we've attached Oh, you guys are together? Yeah. Cool. Oh, cool. Wow, you guys work together on your siblings? That's amazing. I can't spend like more than 24 hours with my brother. <laughs> I want to like kill each other after 24 hours. I'm like, okay, bro, nice to see you again. See you Christmas. <laughs> yeah, that is impressive. No I'm kidding. Um, so you think you're known? You think you guys think? What? Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a different question then. What is what is challenging for you guys about sales? Get, let me get, hear some frustrations. We, we wasted ad money. What's that? We wasting our money on ads. Good. Wasted ads. Tell me more. Uh, I don't, Cannibal, cannibalization. I don't like going and knocking on someone's door. You don't like cold calling. Yeah. Dislike cold calling. Yep. I don't like that there's a direct line between effort and results. <coughs> well, tell me more about that. So it's like if you put like an ad out and then a customer, the new customer is driven into the store, there's really no way for me to say, I did this and I spent one hundred dollars yep. and I got this in return. Got it. Got it. We'll we'll come to that. Other people. Casual society. <laughs> Tell me. Oh, just people don't wear. Yeah, throwaway yeah. society. Yeah. Casual wear. Yep. Yeah. It's frustrations around sales. Uh, oh, there's not. I, I got one. Yep. Well, we, we've done radio ads like three years ago, four years yeah. ago. Yeah. Somebody comes in and you know, we, how'd you hear of us? I just heard your radio ad. Yeah, yeah, so. but you don't know which one. Well, kind of thing? Or we haven't done a radio app in four years. Uh-huh. You know? uh -huh. That's probably a smart idea. <laughs> yeah. Sounds like a great investment then. <laughs> I think we should all just forget everything I just said, guys. Everyone put all their money in radio ads. I'm leaving. <laughs> when, when your competitor advertises, it helps you. Yeah. They put a billboard up, it helps you. Because your customers think of you. Even though it says uh, some other cleaners, it helps you. Same thing with the radio. But I have one. Yeah. I don't. Sometimes you put out those coupons and you cannibalize yourself. Yeah. <coughs> Your regular customer who would have paid full price. Yeah. Using a coupon. Yeah. Yeah. So you. So so. Sounds like you should stop doing coupons. <laughs> <laughs> Any, anybody else? All right. Cool. So so let's ju let's jump into. I think you know wasted at. So this is great, and I think that I would encourage all of you to really take a hard look at your ad spend right now, right? And just, just, to, just to get a sense of the room, how many people in here still, uh, how many people in here spend money on TV commercials? How many people spend money on radio? How many people spend money on print? Uh -huh. How many people spend money on Facebook? Uh, Instagram? Uh, the, uh, keep your hands up for Facebook real quick. Of Facebook, and don't, don't be honest with me, please. How many people have been happy with the results from their Facebook? Not many. Good. So like two. How many people have been not happy with the results of their Facebook? Okay. So let's talk about, so let's just go through the list real quick. Wasted ad money um, I think is really important. I think everyone should go through and look at their ad spend and see if it's actually resulting in anything. If you don't know if it's resulting in anything, we're gonna talk about that next. Um, because there's ways for Facebook to show you what's working. Just like cold calling, um, 
I think the cold calling part goes away a lot when the brand is strong, right? So I'm hoping that what we did in the first like grand portion of this talk will help with that. I do think like cold calling um, is still smart in a certain context, which we'll talk about in a second. Uh, the ad to the result, I'm gonna spend quite a bit of time on that next. Casual wear, I don't really know what to, what to, say, what, what to say about that. Radio ads, sounds like you just need more radio ads. Um, <laughs> I wanna just show you guys a couple things real quick about how, let's see if this is still up, cool. So this is my that's my this is my Facebook page right here. So I'm just gonna hang. Oh, that's, sorry, I'm just gonna hang here for a second. Um, all right. So this is what a you know you guys have professional Facebook pages. You look different in like every picture. Yeah, I, tr I know. I try to change it up. I have commitment. I have commitment <laughs> issues. <so. laughs> oh, no, <it> is. <laughs> So my parents named me Victor, but my middle name is Brian. So my middle name is Brian, and I always tell my mom it's like a, it was like a family it's like a family name. They named me Victor, but called me Brian because my mom didn't really want to name me Victor. I don't think, and so I always tell her like that's why I have commitment issues, mom, because I don't really know my name. So you can see there's I have a bunch of Facebook videos here. Now what you'll notice here is a couple different things. If you open up this video, right? Oh, let's see. Okay, this is in Spanish, but don't worry about that. So I have not um, done anything with this video. I just literally put it up. It has 287 views, right? A couple different things I want to point out here. The first is don't worry about the number of views. Everyone's so obsessed with the number of views. I have been in situations where I literally got 91 views on a video and it resulted in like $20,000 of business because two people who were the right people saw it. So the first thing I'll say is as you guys start thinking about putting up content, don't get caught up on, oh, I only have 100 views. If it's 100 really relevant customers, that video you put up is really, really worth it, even if you have 100 views or 13 views or one view, okay? That's the first thing. Second thing I wanna show you guys is like this video is just a pure, branding video. It's a conference that I gave in Latin America. I put it up. I had no expectation. It's just there for free content, right? That's cool. Now, <laughs> let me show you something different. Let's close this. Let me show you something different. You just got wiped up here. <laughs> what happened? That was someone in the room. That was, that was somebody in the room. Oh, really? <laughs> Who just liked my comment? Who just liked it? I like the picture of that. You're thanks, bro, thanks, man. <laughs> thanks, thanks for engaging in me, Bob. <laughs> what happened back there, Bob? I just went on your website and gave you my email address. Did you really? Don't give me any crap. <laughs> Lori Corona is Lori in the room? Uh -huh. Love you, Lori. Need your phone number Everyone too. in this room, follow me right now, or I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just find you one thing here. I want to show you. So look at this. See, do it. Okay. So this, so this video right here is, so I did a competition I told you guys in Latin America where I basically told people to send me an application about their business idea and I would pick two winners, right? This, this is a video that I did and you, <laughs> this is gonna get good, this is gonna get really good. I'm just not gonna look at the screen for a second. There are two different kinds of Facebook videos you can do. You can do a Facebook video that you just put up and it's just there, or you can do a Facebook video where there's a call to action, okay? And when you are doing a, a purely branded video, a purely branded video where you just, you just want exposure, you just want people to know about you, you can just put the video up and you can just let it live there, right? But if you're trying to sell something, which all of us are trying to sell something, there are all of these call to action buttons. Right here, it's, it's a sign up button, right? And what I'm gonna do is, this is an old video, so the, the, the link used to be brianrashford.com slash participa, which was the link to the competition that I was doing. So what you guys might wanna do 
is when you put up your video on YouTube, right? There's a couple things that I want to mention about about YouTube video. Uh, I'm sorry, about Facebook videos. Number one, your Facebook videos are not working for one of two reasons. Number one, you are not targeting them properly, meaning your video, bless you, your video that you are putting out does not speak to the audience that you want to see it. In other words, if I'm trying to sell sneakers to a hip hop neighborhood in New York City that's 95% African American between 16 to 21 years old, and the person that's modeling the sneakers in the video is a 42 year old white dude, it's not a smart video. And I know you, I hear laughter and I always get like chuckles on this. I am blown away at how many videos people are creating where they're trying to sell to one demographic and the protagonists or the actors in the videos look nothing like those people, right? So if you want to sell to 62 year old Latinos, you can't be the one that does the video. You have to find a 62 year old Latino to be in your video, right? That's number one. The content that you're creating. Is that on like the interview videos or is that? No, that's on the sales pieces, right? That's on the sales pieces. So when you're selling something, you have to make the person that's watching the video think, ah, they're talking to me. So if I'm selling brides, brides dress services, it can't be, unless, unless you're selling to the husband, unless the husband is the one you ultimately want to buy the product, it can't be a man. And it really, it can be you, but it's, it's better if it's someone that's about to actually get married, right? My wedding is coming up in October. I'm really excited. Uh, thank you so much to, to your company for doing this thing. Then you put that up. So that's the first thing. The second reason that it's not working is you're not contextualizing it quickly enough in the video. And I mentioned this briefly before, but you, you have about two to four seconds to get somebody's attention. So you can't be like, back in 1932, my father started blah, 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 blah. If you are creating a video that you are targeting to family businesses, you say, I know you have a family business and this video is for you. Yeah, I have, a I have a family business and I'm watching, right? That's mostly why your Facebook's uh, um, co content is not working for you. It's not contextual in terms of the video content itself and the opening line is not hooking people fast enough. Okay, does that make sense? Now, here's the reason that most of you don't know why, what is or is not working to your, to your point because your call to action buttons are basically all the same, right? So what you need to do when you, when you think through Facebook or you think through Instagram is you need to have different videos that have different call to action buttons, meaning you do a video for a 21 year old kid that's just starting his first job, the call to action button has to lead them to a different page or the end of the video has to say, when you come into my cleaners, you need to say the word suit, first suit, and we'll take care of your first suit cleaning for free. So now what's going to happen is you or whoever's running your front end, when they walk in, they say, hey, I saw your video on Facebook. The problem is you don't know which video they saw because you're at any time, what you, you should all be doing is running seven to 10 to 20 Facebook videos in a month or two, right? because you have a lot of different customers. So when you come in, when I come in and I say, hey, I saw your video, you or whoever's in front, be like, tell me, remind me what the, what the, uh, the password was or what the, you know, the discount code was. It was first suit. Oh, cool. And then they're literally there. And you're, you're gonna get all this data from Facebook, but like, you're, you, I would still at the very beginning, just test it that way. Have someone be like, hey, bride, uh, hotel, coach K, Maybe you do an ad targeted to all the coaches in Indiana, in Indianapolis, and the code is Coach K. Like, yo, when Coach K, like, you know, you're, you're a basketball coach in Indiana. I'm, so, I'm sure you loved Coach K, or maybe you hated him because he was so epic at Duke. But if you have a big game coming up, bring your stuff in, say Coach K, and we'll give you 50% off. Track it. That's how you track it. And people are, people are like just putting up a Facebook ad and saying, book now or come visit us or whatever, and you're having... You know, seven different radio ads, someone walks in and they say, I have a Facebook ad, and you, 
Like, which one? I don't know. Is the one about uh, the coaches or, uh, you know? Does that make sense? In the Facebook content, give people something to say when they walk in your store. Or if you get really techy, have, send them to different places, you know, and, 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 and this, is, this is more work, but like if you have a landing page, I'm not even going to go there. I would just say for now, when you're starting, put something in the copy that lets people know that they saw this video on First Suit or Coach K. Cool? Now, for the cold call part and the thing that we were talking about earlier, in some cases, you, you don't want it to, you know, there's different call to action buttons that you can have. So you can have sign up, maybe that's your newsletter. You can have shop now, or you can have call us, right? I actually think call us could be a really interesting thing for a lot of you. So he was sharing with me earlier, they have a salesperson, they're trying to figure out how to best utilize this guy's talent. He's really good talker. Maybe you guys have something like that in your company. Maybe you do a, vi a Facebook video and it says, want information about, want more information about what we offer? Call us. And then you get that phone call and you say, hey, how'd you hear about us? Facebook, right? And then all of a sudden you're, you're t you, can I get your name? Can I get your email? Give me your number. And now all of a sudden you're getting them into your funnel. And now I got a question. Our website sure. has a great sign up here for service. Perfect. So you can send them to your website. It drives people to get more information than my front counter staff needs to be able to get. Yep. So we can name, address, phone number, they put their credit card right in. And even people for the front counter will do all that extra information, even though they just sure. want information from the front counter. Sure, and you don't, and, and, and you don't have... a place for a code that they do. Good. And I would also utilize that Facebook page to do the... To, to get them into... To, to send them to your website to get them into your funnel. And then you'll be able to see on Facebook, and again, I don't have time to go into how to track all this stuff, but just spend some time. How do I track analytics on Facebook? And you'll be able to see which people came from which sites. Okay. Does that make sense? I know it's, it's a, if you've never run a Facebook ad, it's a lot. It's a lot. And, it, and I'm speaking fairly contextual. I'm sp speaking fairly like high level here. But you just need to go do the work. Like I, I don't have 20 hours to teach you this right now. I wish I did. Couple things. Um, Instagram. Instagram is a huge tool for you. And let me explain why. It's, and then we'll, we'll have, we have time for questions, right? right? Yeah, okay. So let me just jump into Instagram really, really quick. And let me see how much they'll let me do on the desktop. All right, so check this out. Let's see if they let me do this. So guys, for those of you who are not familiar with Instagram, you can actually hashtag search things. There's a couple of ways, if I was a small business owner in the dry cleaning industry, how I would use it. The first thing I would do is I would literally hashtag search my city. So let's say I'm from Peoria, Illinois. Let's say I wanted to check out what's happening in Peoria, Illinois. So this is what's gonna happen, guys. It's gonna break things down by top posts, right? And by most recent. Top posts are the most popular. Most recent are the most recent, <laughs> okay? So what does this mean for you? What I would do is I would t type in Indianapolis. I would type in Carmel. I would type in uh, uh, Birmingham. I would, t if you can get even more niche into the neighborhoods, I would type in Upper East Side. I would type, type in Midtown West. I would type in whatever. So check this out. This is, this is a great little hack. Here's what I would do. So top posts, what is this guy up to? All right, so this guy just posted, so this is, Let's just assume, this is, this is not the greatest example, but like for time's sake, <clears throat> let's just assume this guy put up a video 21 hours ago and it got 1,000 or 10,000 views. And let's just say I go to this guy's website or this guy's page, right? And let's just say, I, let's, I'm gonna make stuff up because just for time's sake. Let's say he had 3,000 followers. Let's say it says, I am hip hop, I love Pura, Illinois, right? Here's what I would do. I would write him a message. There's these three little dots here. You hit those, those uh, see I can't do it on the desktop. There are those three little dots on your phone. You hit those three little dots and there's a button that says send message. You can now send whatever his name is, in, in Clutra. I can send Unclutra a message. Uncle, uh, uncle Aldra. Whatever. <laughs> I can send my uncle a message. 
I'm, gonna, I'm actually gonna send. I'm gonna send Uncle Ultra a message. Uncle Ultra, that's a great name, actually. Dude, I'm just trying. I'm just trying to get it all in right now, man. I didn't even realize three hours ago so fast. So, so, Uncle Ultra, who I'm totally gonna become friends with, by the way. I'm actually. I'm glad we're recording this, Uncle Ultra. I'm gonna write you. We're gonna meet up in Peoria, and then I'm gonna send you guys all the video of Uncle Ultra and I. All right. So. If Uncle Ultra lives in Peoria, he's all about hip hop, he loves Peoria, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna send Uncle Ultra a message. It's called Instagram Influencers. I'm gonna send a message, I'm gonna say, hey Uncle Ultra, I have two, uh, love your music, blah, 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 blah. I have two options for you. I'd, like you. I'd like you to promote my dry cleaning establishment. Right? I'm focused on young hip hop artists, a lot of them bringing their stuff to me. I'm focused on rappers, I'm focused on hip hop, I'm, I'm focused on the, the, the musician industry, right? I want to know if you'll come in and I'll do your laundry for free for a month. If every single week on Monday you promote, you put up a post of you standing in my dry cleaners. He'll probably do it. Or he might say, nah, I'm good, man. I don't, I don't really use a dry cleaner like that. But if you want, I'll give you a shout out for a hundred bucks or 500 bucks. And then you say, okay, cool. Here's a hundred bucks. Here's what I want the shout out to say. He'll do a video, he'll be like, yo, Peoria, like this Peoria Cleaners is bomb. Um, for all my musicians out there, like check them, peace. Right? He'll say something like that. Oh, oh, and make sure you use Uncle Ultra when you pop through because they're gonna give you a 10% discount. Now you can actually see. So let's say you pay Uncle Ultra hundred bucks, right? Let's say three people come through. Now, and those three people come through today and then in a week and then another week and another week. And all of a sudden you just made $123 on your $100 investment. Good idea. Do this 100 more times with 100 more people. That's called Instagram influencers. It's a humongous marketing hack right now that will work if you, if you it, it takes a lot of time. Like you have to DM a lot of people. 99% of them will tell you no. And then, and then some of them will come back and say, sure, it's, it's $1,500 for a shout out. You're like, no, dude. And some of them will come back and be like, it's 50 bucks. Some of them will say, just do my laundry for free. But you can track it over the course of a month, two months, three months, six months. This is huge. Question. Hashtags. So you go into that search and I would do like Indianapolis brides. I would do, uh, you know, hip Peoria, Illinois. I would do Birmingham, Alabama and you'd see most recent people. You'd see most recent, you'd see top, right? And here's the, here's the beautiful thing. So if you're targeting, you know, if you're targeting mothers, let's say, let's say you're targeting soccer moms. I would type in soccer moms Peoria, soccer moms Indianapolis, soccer moms Midwest, soccer moms Indiana. And then you're gonna see all these posts and then you're gonna go into their pages and you're gonna see where they live. You're gonna see how much engagement they have. You're gonna see, and all of a sudden, with 100 bucks, you can get in front of 1,000 new people by using that influencer. And when everyone thinks of influencer, these people don't have to have 500,000 followers. It's probably actually better if you're working in a smaller neighborhood or a smaller city if they have 3,000 or 5,000 or 10,000, but they're all hyper-engaged people. Does that make sense? That is a tremendous hack. That's called Instagram influencers. Okay. The other thing that you could do if you wanted to do local collaborations is you could type in, you know, um, interior des or, um, 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 cake, you know, cake makers, p pastry chefs, Indianapolis, and you could find those people and you could say, Hey, you're a pastry chef. You do a lot of uh, weddings. I want to sell to brides. Can you do me a shout out? So think through like cross, cross pollination, cross, promotional opportunities. Make sense? Taylor shops. What's that? Taylor shops. Taylor shops. Totally. People go to a tailor and ask them who's the good price. Perfect. That's a great example. So I would do Taylor shop in Indianapolis. And that could, you know, and by the way, you, if you can't find them on Facebook, on Instagram, you can Google who they are and just call them. Last thing I'd say around social media and sales is we run around like chickens with our heads cut off because uh, I actually think 
No, I actually think we're good on this. We, we run around like crazy because we want to find new customers, new customers, new customers, new customers, new customers. We go to networking events to find new customers. We do all these things for new customers. There's a couple different things that I'd say. Your existing customers are your greatest marketers. And so many people miss this. So many people do not take the time to do one of two things. And we actually literally have a chief surprise and delight officer in my company whose entire job is to figure out how, what matters to our clients and how we can surprise them with something. Let me tell you what happens when, this, when you guys actually do this. When you get the names and the emails of the people that are coming into your store and you or somebody that you hire is on Twitter or on Instagram or on Facebook looking at what matters to them, <coughs> right? And then you gift them something relevant. I'm not talking about a flower or a box of chocolates or a bottle of wine. I'm talking about something really, really specific to something that they said they care about. My son's eighth birthday is coming up and you send that kid a $100 gift card, you send that parent a $100 gift card to Trader Joe's because the parent mentioned on Twitter that they love the Trader Joe's ice cream pops. And you say, here's $100, go buy some ice cream pops for Johnny's eighth birthday. Thank you for your business. Let me tell you what happens. Papa jo of Johnny takes that picture of that gift card and P Johnny's Papa puts that all, all over his social media and says, thank you so much, Fabricare, for this really unbelievable detail. No one's doing this, no one. That's number one. Number two, you can ask your current customers to post about you on social media or to refer you one or two new, new customers. No one's doing that either. It's like the most obvious things in business we're not doing because we think that we have to go chase more and more and more and more and more. If you have been in business and you have 500 customers or a thousand customers or 2000 customers, you literally have the opportunity to tap into those 500, 1000, 2000 to make unbelievable advances in your marketing for free for a $17 pen for a $38 new tie. Right? So that's the other thing I would say is the sales don't have to be so hard. Does that make sense? All right, so I'm gonna, I know we're almost out of time. I wanna just answer any final questions that you guys have about any of this. Yes? For those of us that spend money with Google, how important is it to have a third party uh, a firm that analyzes, does the analytics every month and tweaks the well, well, the Google Analytics are pretty easy to read, right? Like, have you ever read a Google Analytic report? No. It's pretty easy. It's like, here's how many people came to your site, here's how many impressions that you had. I would say this, look at it next month. If you feel like you can wrap your head around it and you feel like it's working, do you have any idea what the numbers are? This is a perfect example of what I'm talking about, what, which is why it's so dangerous to not know the technology side. Because I can't answer that question for you because you don't even know your own numbers, right? And you've never even looked at them. So the, first, the, the, the quickest answer would be try to look at your numbers yourself try to make sense of them yourself, and then sit with the person and be like, explain these to me and see what he or she says. Because they might, what they'll probably do, honestly, is they'll sit you down and be like, so this month you had 16 impressions and you had, and you're like, yeah, dude, I, I, I can read, you know, but like, what does it mean? Oh, well, this is basically like what it means. In which case you don't need them, right? Question, does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. On the Facebook ad, uh Right now, we don't have the video about when we do the post. You can choose, you can uh, advertise Instagram as well, but if you have the video, it's not gonna be able to do that because video is longer and Instagram needs to be shorter. Right, that's, that's why you can do them. You can do the meme videos on Instagram. So, so I would take the, click it and did it take like, Instagram, Instagram. right, right. Cause the 10 minute video on Facebook can't go up into the one minute max. Yeah, so that's why it's important to do the video on Facebook and then to take the best clip of that video, put it on Instagram, because then you can run an Instagram ad against that video. Make sense? Yes. So, Brian, you said you'd talk a little bit about Google Ads and why it might not be. As I just think it's expensive. Okay. It's expensive. It's more. It's much more expensive than this. Right. Yeah, that's why. That's why we don't mess with it. Okay. It's more expensive, and it's 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 a little bit less of a pure 
marketplace. It's a little bit more manipulated. And if you're doing a lot of this stuff, your SEO will elevate. The more content you produce on these platforms, your SEO will elevate. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Brian, when I'm doing uh, my face Facebook ads, I'm targeting over 100,000. I'm targeting my zip code. Yep. And then the, around the, my zip code. Yep. But end of the results is coming to me end of the month. It's somewhere in, in Los Angeles that I'm not targeting. Really? So, and then the people that is liking <coughs> my site is less over than budget that I'm targeting. So it's very confusing. Well, that, so what's probably happening, if that's the case, is that there, so when you face, when you boost a post on Facebook, you're still going to get some organic reach. So those people are probably receiving it organically because it wouldn't, it wouldn't make sense. It would, the, the platform is too sophisticated to send it to people that you haven't told to send it to. So what I'm saying is like, if I compare my ads to Google ads, to the Facebook ads, yep. my Google ads is working much, much better than my Facebook ads. So then keep doing it. So then keep doing it. I, you listen, this, and this is a good question, and, and, and this is actually an interesting point to your question, which is, if it's, do whatever's working. Keep doing it. I'm not saying to stop. If Google Ads work for you, and Google Ads work for you, then keep doing it. I'm just saying give this other stuff a shot. And just because people from Los Angeles are liking your page doesn't mean that the ad's not working. It just means that you're also reaching some other people organically. So don't give up on the Facebook ad yet. It doesn't mean it's not working. It just means that other people are liking it too that are not, but you're not, pay, you're not paying for that person in, L, in, in, in LA, for example that you're not targeting. Does that make sense? You're only paying for the people that you're targeting. So the rest of the stuff that comes is just a free bonus. Cool? Yes, sir. Can I geofence Facebook and Instagram? Or is that only Google? Meaning, meaning what? Target, target a specific geographic oh, area. Oh yeah, yep. You can so do it eight, uh, eight mile radius from your office. So I, I actually have uh, a 12 block area, which is downtown my city, and, I, and I'm doing a campaign for that downtown area. You can do zip code. Okay. So you could do so you yeah, could do okay. zip code. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So that would that would get you pretty close. Okay. That gets you pretty close. And you can do like within a mile mm -hmm. from I don't know if they let you go down closer to a mile. I've never run closer to a mile. But even if you run it within a mile of your twelve block radius, mm -hmm. still it's still pretty close. Yeah. Right? Is that cool. Is that based on their location yeah. for their profile or yeah. where their mobile device that Per their profile, per their profile. Not the app is not capturing. I don't think so. Not uh, I, I. I actually don't know the answer to that question. Yeah. But I, but it used to be per their profile. Unless they've updated it, I don't know. But it's a good it's a good thing to look into. So I can pick somebody in the center of my core and say within a mile of that person. Yep. Cool. Okay. Yep. Thanks. Totally. Question. Well, I was I was going to ask about geofencing, and you're telling me. We can put an address, and they can go from that mile from that address, and it doesn't necessarily go to our our plant, so to speak. You can pick any point to do it. But you can, but you can, yeah, you can pick different points, right? You can pick different different you locations. Like yeah, you can put like within one mile of Cheesecake Factory and 86th Street, right? Final questions. <laughs> I think we've covered a lot. <laughs> um, when do we get the video? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mao's Ma, Ma got nothing to do, don't worry. Um, so a couple, couple final thoughts I wanted to share. I think we're doing some sort of round table, right? In an hour. And so is that like a, more of a question and answer time? Yep. Okay. So if you guys digest and... We've got about 15 minutes per table and we'll rotate them. All right, cool. So then, so I'm happy to go around. The, the, the final thing I want to leave you with is this. Um, this stuff is all going to take much longer than you think. Mm -hmm. Right? And the biggest problem that I see for most people is they want to give up after six months or if you're really impatient after three months. And like we've, we've been at this for almost two years, but really for the last year and a half, I've been consistently con creating content at scale. And what I can tell you is the opportunities that will come to you will blow your mind. And my, my plea for you is just start doing something and be patient and recognize that, you know, you said earlier, this, this all seems like it takes a lot of time. Yeah, but it's your business, right? And it's, this is 2018 marketing and 2019 and 2020. So 
give yourself permission to kind of take that time. <coughs> and um, again, if, if I can help or if, if you'd like to figure out ways to do something together, connect at brianrashid.com is my email. Uh, I think we can throw that, maybe, oh, it's, it's off, it's fine. You guys all got my email, right? If you need it, if you need it come talk to me. Um, but I think more than anything, I really feel a lot of great energy from this group. And I think that you should just try this. Give yourself a couple of years of doing this. And I know one of you will write me and be like, hey, the thing you said, I just doubled or tripled or 5x my business. Thank you. And that for me is really all I want. I really respect what you guys are all doing. Thank you for the opportunity. And uh, you guys were awesome.